Once again, welcome on behalf of the School of Santa Barbara County and Economic Development Cooperative. Um, thank you for being here today. Hey, my name is Juliana Ramirez, I'm President and CEO of JR Bookkeeping. I'm a financial advisor with EDC SBDC and a workshop uh, mentor volunteer with SCORE. I've been doing accounting for 20 years for, um, for small businesses. I'm a workshop presenter. I'm, a, um, again, a business advisor, community volunteer, and certified QuickBooks Online for advisor. I've trained and helped multiple small businesses, including my own. I do pride and enable the clients to handle as much or as little as they, uh, of their business, accounting and bookkeeping as they desire. Um, the information provided is based upon facts that were available at the time of publication and are subject to change. We, we make no uh, warranties expressed or implied or representations as to the accuracy, completeness, or timeliness of the information provided. We cannot be held liable for any claims or damages that result from reliance on this information. Neither SCORE or SCORE mentors provide legal or accounting advice. This presentation provides a general overview of the subject matter. You should seek advice from your lawyers, accountants, and other advisors regarding the specifics of your business. Today, we're gonna to talk about the new provisions of the Paycheck Protection Program. We'll give you an update on SBA loan status, including denials, although we know that the majority of the questions might come just from these new provisions that were released um, last week. And what will banks be asking to be, uh, obtain forgiveness if we get some time to do a live demonstration on how to track PPP and idle expenses, as well as um, how to obtain forgiveness. That is the purpose of our webinar today. As far as the new provisions of the Paycheck Protection Program, um, notice that in this slide, we are doing the new rules are in this font um, highlighted in, in yellow, and the old rules um, are crossed off. So the, only, the loan may only be used to pay payroll, business, rent, mortgage, interest, or utilities, nothing else. This is just a reminder uh, as to what the Paycheck Protection Program um, is uh, and was designed for. Um, in the past, you had eight weeks. Now you have 24 weeks to use the loan funds, and this is called your covered period. After the eight weeks um, and now the 24 weeks, you apply for your lender uh, for loan forgiveness. If you can show that at least 60% under the new um, provisions of the loan was indeed used for payroll and not more than 40% was used for the other authorized purposes, the loan is forgiven by the lender. So again, note how the change, these are the changes. Instead of eight weeks, you now have 24 weeks. Instead of spending it 75% on payroll, um, now you have 60%. Um, and instead of 25% on other expenses, now it goes up to 40%. Um, the loan, the, to get loan forgiveness, there are some rules you need to follow. Um, right now, it looks like it could be mandatory to use at least 60% of the loan for payroll in order to get any loan forgiveness at all. So for instance, using more than 40% of the loan to pay for rent, mortgage interest, or utilities may now disqualify you from getting any loan forgiveness. We will be watching for more clarification about this. However, again, in the past, even if you didn't spend um, the 75% on payroll, you could still be forgiven a portion. Now, right now, it looks like it's going to be mandatory to spend at least 60% on payroll um, to be able to gain forgiveness. Um, the loan forgiveness is proportionally reduced if you don't hire back up to the level of full-time employees you had before the COVID disruption. This was before June 30th. Now it's, June, uh, it's December 31st. However, if you can show you made a good faith effort to staff back up but couldn't find workers willing to work, or if you can show your business is not able to return to its previous level of business activity due to COVID um, health and safety restrictions, you will be exempt uh, from this proportional reduction in loan forgiveness. So again, as long as we're able to show that um, there was, again, a good effort to be able to bring back your staff or that because of the uh, safety and, and restrictions that you're not able to give, be back up, um, as long as we're able to show that, you, you should be good there. Um, the loan forgiveness is also proportionally reduced if you cut the wages of any workers to less than 75% of their wage level. 
before COVID disruption and you haven't restored each of their wages up to at least 75% level by June 30th, now December 31st. Loan forgiveness is also reduced by the amount of any SBA economic injury disaster loan. This is the advance payment, which is a grant your business received as COVID relief. Only the idle advance counts against PPP loan forgiveness, not the idle loan. So again, if you receive an advance, that advance is going to reduce the forgiveness of your loan, um, for, of your PPP loan. If you received an idle loan, um, only the advanced portion is what's going to be reducing that forgiveness. If any of, the, of your loan is not forgiven, the unforgiven balance must be repaid at 1% over a two-year term, which now becomes a five-year term with the first payment deferred. I'm going to talk a little bit about this two- and five-year term because it's going to be important that we all understand how that applies to existing loans. Um, with the first payment being deferred for six months until after the end of the 24 week period, plus the time it takes for the lender to be refunded by SBA for the loan forgiveness amount. This could be anywhere from six to 10 months, at least that's what we know for now. If you just neglect to seek loan forgiveness, payments start 10 months after the end of your covered period. So again, from the day of funding, um, 56 days from that if you are under the eight week or, um, the 24 or, or after the 24 week. Neither collateral nor personal guarantees are required and there's no means test to qualify. All the rules are or either are or will be published here. Um, what we have right now, what I'm sharing with you to, um, at this moment is the latest information that we have. Um, we are checking this link regularly every morning to make sure that um, every morning and afternoon to make sure um, that we have the latest information. So if you haven't received a PPP loan yet, um, this is the time for you to consider um, applying. So now it's the time to get a PPP loan. There's still more than 100 billion of PPP loan uh, funding remaining. Over the, over the past week, there were relatively few new PPP loans approved, totally, totally less um, than half a billion a week. But with the new improvements, there could be much greater demand for the remaining funds. So plan to apply with your lender early in the coming week. It appears that the last day to get a PPP loan will be June 30th or whenever the funding is, is expended. Once the remaining funds are exhausted, it seems unlikely that additional funds will be allocated. Um, to get a PPP loan, you need it, uh, to find a commercial lender making PPP loans. The best place to start looking for a PPP loan is still um, your um, your existing business uh, banking institution. If your main business bank isn't offering PPP loans, you do have um, other uh, banking relationships. So if, if your main bank is not where you are able to apply, maybe uh, an, a credit union. Um, but you can also check this link here to be able to find a lender. SBA posts a list of the lenders who uh, made PPP loans with the last round of funds in each state. You can find the information there. Um, but this, please be aware that that's not the list of the lenders. So again, we would uh, highly encourage you that you check with your bank first. And if they're not uh, accepting, there are others that are. Um, you might want to focus on small local banks like credit unions and CFDIs. Um, there's a link here um, for those uh, banks by, by asset size. You can also um, consider PayPal, Intuit, QuickBooks, Square, OnDeck, Funding Circle, Cabbage, and Bluevine. I personally have found all of these very helpful um, and very streamlined. It, they have a very uh, streamlined process and it's fair, fairly quickly. Locally, we know that Montecito Bank and Trust is also accepting applications uh, for uh, non-clients. Um, in addition to the EC2 page PPP application, which you can found here in this link, the only other information needed to apply is documentation showing your typical monthly payroll costs. So that would be your, um, your 941s, your D9s. And those are like the quarterly returns. Um, 
Um, the how to calculate maximum loan amounts um, by business type, um, there is an information sheet here on this link. So again, if you haven't received a PPP loan yet because you didn't know about it or you didn't know where to go or you didn't think you needed, but now you do, please consider um, there's still funds as we now um, as we know. If you have already have a PPP loan, um, you cannot apply for a second PPP loan. You must make do with the PPP loan you have. For businesses that have PPP loan already, and especially those that have PPP loan funds unsent, it appears that much of the new latitude in the PPP Flexibility Act with regard to use of PPP funds and loan forgiveness requirements applies to you. Uh, however, existing PPP borrowers have been operating under the old rules. For instance, those indicated above using the font that we said, and many are approaching or even or are even at the end of their eight week covered period and have already used some or all their PPP funds with the old rules in mind. The act does not mention that if you want to remain under the original eight week period, does mention, I'm sorry, that if you want to remain under the original eight week period for using your loan funds, you may do so. So again, you have the choice to, uh, if you've already used all these funds, um, you can, um, you don't have to go into the 24 week. Um, but if you haven't, then you can move to the 24 week. Existing PPP uh, borrowers are also already obligated under a PPP promissory note with a two year term. And that note is a contract that is not um, changed by the act. The act does, does mention that an existing PPP loan may be modified to one with a five year term if both the business borrower and the lender mutually agree. So beyond this, it's better not to draw too many conclusions. SBA and Treasury will be providing guidance in the coming days on how the changes in the PPP Flexibility Act apply to those who already have a PPP loan. So as you can see, um, just like when we had this program um, available for the first time and they, there were many questions, we continue to have those because these are programs that are being released as quickly as they, they can and we are learning in the process and applying things in the process. Something important to know for those PPP existing borrowers, the note and the loan agreement do not address forgiveness. So when you signed for that PPP loan, when you signed those documents, it did not address forgiveness. It also states that the terms and conditions of the loan are subject to change and that the loan will be subject to the latest rules issued by the SBA. What does this mean? that because it is subject to the latest rules issued by the SBA, you don't have to do anything regarding um, going from an eight week period to a 24 week period or changing the amount that you spend the money on like the 60% to the 40%. However, the things that, um, that, that do not change is the forgiveness part, um, the loan term, which in this case that the banks do not need to amend the notes since the notes state that the terms and conditions are up to the SBA and not the bank. However, the only things that are not automatically retroactive to the date of the CARES Act are number one, the term going from two years to five years, and that does have to be negotiated with the bank since the notes were written as a two-year note. So again, if you go to that note, you did sign a two-year note. So you're gonna need to, um, I'm, talk to your bank to see how you go from that two year to a five year for the non-forgiven amount of that loan. And the payroll tax deferral that can only be done starting on the date of the Flexibility Act. So those uh, uh, payroll taxes in the past in the old rule, you were not able to defer taxes if you had this type of loan, the PPP loan. Now you can but it can only be for the upcoming taxes, not for anything in the past. Now I'm gonna pause here to see if we have any questions related to what I just shared, which again, were, they, were, were, the, um, were the latest on the new provisions. Yes, ma'am. Uh, first question, can you please clarify, has the eight weeks or 56 days um, of PPP been extended to 24 weeks? Can we utilize funds past the eight week original conditions? Yes. And do we need to do anything? We just- It doesn't look like we need to do anything. Again, like I mentioned here for those existing that, that the banks do not need to amend the notes for that um, because it is stated on the, and I would, I would encourage you to double check your 
um, your note um, to, see, to, to verify what we're sharing here, that the note and loan agreement do not address uh, forgiveness. So if your, if your loan document does address forgiveness, then um, look into what it addresses. Uh, and if it, and, and we understand that it doesn't address forgiveness because at the time that these loans were given, most of them did not have any information about forgiveness. That's what we're seeing there. They, they didn't address forgiveness. Now, it also states that the conditions of the loan are subject to change and that the loan will be subject to the latest rules issued by the SBA, which is what's happening right now. So it doesn't look like we need to go back and amend each note originally. Uh, we, we wanted to be cautious about, well, it sounds like those that already had the loan work and are going to need to go back to their bank and amend those notes. It does, it, it, we, we understand that you don't have to amend those notes because of that um, statement there. So I would highly encourage you guys to um, look at your note. I know that some notes are eight pages and some are 24 pages, some are 30 pages. Every bank is different. So just make sure that um, you check on your note. Perfect. Um, are you going to go over covered period um, and incurred versus paid? We can. Um, is there a specific question on that? or There, or what there is. I didn't want to jump ahead if, um, if you're covering that next or we can address it now. We can. Um, let's see. Let's give it a try. Okay. So um, Allison has been here a few times, so she knows this is my favorite subject, <laughs> paid versus incurred expenses in the PPP during the covered period. An example of eligible forgiveness. Bill date is June 2020. Mm -hmm. Expenses, sorry, I'm, this is breaking my brain. Um, <laughs> bill date is June 2020, um, and the expenses were incurred 326 to 425 and the invoice is due 525. If I paid this within the coverage period of 5 1 to 6 27, is it okay although the expense incurred time was prior to the start of the PPP loan? So first of all, what type of expense is this? If this is an allowed expense like rent, utilities, or um, interest on mortgage, if it is, um, you don't have to, um, it, it can be covered as long as it's paid during the covered period. So in this case, um, the only time that it applies on the incurred or paid that term is for if you choose an, an alternative cover period. So it's if let's say your alternative cover period, um, just to use the example of when you were funded on May 1st. If you were May 1st and your pay period ended April 30th, but you pay your that paycheck um, on let's say May 5th, you can choose to use the cover period from 5-1 and 56 days from that date. So anything that you pay from 5-1 forward, it's covered under that cover period. In your case, it sounds like even if it was due on 5-25, but you didn't pay it, and if your, let's say your loan um, was funded on 6-1 and you paid it on 6-1, am I, am I following correctly there, Emily? I think so. All right. So it would be covered because it is when it's paid. So make sure that you are not com getting confused between what, first of all, what are you using as your cover period? Are you using from the date of funding uh, and 56 days from that date and now 24 weeks from that date? Or are you using an alternative cover period? When you choose an alternative cover period, this is when the expenses are incurred maybe you're, they're going to be incurred during that time, but then paid maybe even at a later time after your covered period ends. That's when it, it's important to understand that it's incurred during your covered period, but you might not be paying it until maybe the next day or two days after that ends. So that is a perfect example on payroll. So if, you're, if you choose an alternative cover period, which will end, um, let's say, June 27th, but you are going to be making that paycheck date, um, let's say July 1st, it is covered because you chose an alternative cover period. Perfect, thank you. Can car lease payments, insurances, like work comp, general liability, property, and auto qualify as utility costs? No, not workers comp or any insurance. Um, I, we would, I would, 
as far as lease payments, um, I would we would check with your bank. Check with your bank to see what they are allowing under transportation, because like we explained in the past, um, we are we understand that transportation is um, for the delivery of services. So if you're leasing a car, um, it sounds like that would be um, a, a transportation expense. However, mileage. Um, that you reimburse might, might not because that may be considered travel expense and travel expense is not a utility. So just make sure that you check with your bank as to what they're allowing. For sure, we know workers comp is not and any other type of insurance because that is not a utility cost. So um, no insurance um, and then you need to talk with your bank about transportation. And you might hear us say that a lot, which is kind of a frustrating answer, but unfortunately it the forgiveness details do vary from bank to bank and it's the SBA has left it up to the banks to um, interpret it. That is correct. Um, is it still possible to request loan forgiveness and is there a deadline to submit the application? There's no deadline to, uh, to submit the application right now. At least there's no deadline that the SBA has released to the banks. What we understand is that once you um, once your cover period ends, your bank should be sending you, well, they should have already sent you that application. You're going to, again, need to check with your bank to see if they're already accepting those applications and how they're processing them, but there's no deadline. Great. At um, least that we know for now. And then the follow-up question is, is it likely that they will forgive the loan if the money is used like he's supposed to use it? Of course. That is the purpose of the loan. So again, this is where it's so important that you keep the right documentation, that you use the money the way that it was designed to be used for. Great, those are all of our questions. All right, perfect. So I'm gonna move on because I did touch on a couple of these items last time, which was assistance with SBA loan status on and denial. If you have applied for an SBA's, um, SBA's idle loan and not heard status, um, you can send us an email at info at edcollaborative.com with the subject reading as SBA EIDL loan status unknown. If you have received an idle advance with no further communication from the SBA, please be patient as they, as they are processing an unprecedented number of applications, as, as, of applications at this time. You should consider the loan advance as a status of receipt of your loan application. We have seen a little bit faster moves, uh, movement with these applications. We are see, we are we are, we have seen a um, an increased um, 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 processing of these applications faster. So we're seeing a little bit more of that, which is good news. But if you still haven't heard and are wondering what's going on with your application, you may um, send us that information and we'll be happy to check in for you. Um, and if your economic injury disaster loan or your idle loan was denied, you have up to six months to reapply for consideration for an economic, for that idle loan after a denial. If you have been denied, you can reapply for consideration by first emailing edcrecons at sba.gov. Um, at this point, we are not aware of a path for reconsideration of a loan amount that has been approved for an amount lower than was expected or needed. We are seeing a lot of this um, um, uh, situations where um, borrowers were expect expecting or were hoping for a lot more than what they um, qualified them for. But unfortunately right now there's still no, um, no information regarding changing that amount. Um, so we would encourage that if you are able to you know, get a loan and even if it's not the amount that you expected or the, the amount that you desired, you have the option of taking that or, um, or, or, or trying to find a different source of, of loans. I have a um, question for you. Um, yeah. a, a friend of mine who owns a graphic design firm, his idle loan got denied because they said he did a duplicate application. However, he did not do a duplicate application and now he's just stuck in this loop where <laughs> Yeah, he, where he calls them and says, this is what happened. And they say, no, you're right. That is what happened. I don't know what to do. Oh, so that is a perfect, that is exactly what you can help, uh, that you can send us um, an, an email. So if you okay. send an email, we, can, we will be happy to send that email to the SBA. 
um, let them know because um, all it is is, is that explanation, um, especially if he, 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 he didn't really apply for TIL. Um, we are seeing, um, we did, the SBA did share about eight different scenarios that are happening that are kind of automatically giving denial to some businesses. And that is maybe the way that you answer some of the questions on the original application. Um, you know, maybe there were misunderstood or you put something that you thought it was that, but it wasn't. And so it obviously, it automatically disqualifies you. But this is exactly why we are providing this information and we're assisting with that because we know that um, you can submit uh, for reconsideration. All right, for um, EDD unemployment overpayment concerns, if you believe you have been receiving an overpayment, um, they, this is what you can do. Number one, you can uh, contact EDD. We know it can be difficult, so be patient. Their hours are 8 to 12. Uh, at noon, Monday through Friday, except state holidays, and you can contact the number on the um, on the screen. Um, also, consider saving the portion of the money you believe to be an overpayment. The EDD may conduct uh, conduct audits on the claims that have been repaid. If an overpayment has been found, EDD can request repayment. So, for more information on overpayment, please visit uh, the the, uh, the link on the on the screen. Now, I want to. Um, Oh, one more thing, information on commercial and residential evictions. So California did extend a moratorium on evictions until July 28th. So if you are currently a commercial tenant, Governor Newsom, um, Newsom has issued an executive, executive order implementing a statewide moratorium on evictions through July 28th. If you're currently renting and unable to pay rent due to financial hardship and the impact of COVID-19, we encourage you to inform your landlord by completing the notice of coronavirus related inability to pay rent. We've shared this up, um, in the past, um, and if you need that, um, we, we would also make it available. If you let us know on the chat, I'm sorry, in the Q&A or chat. Um, and in order to preserve your rights as a tenant. So again, for more information on COVID-19 moratorium related eviction guidelines in Ventura and Santa Barbara County, you may visit this link. We have the latest on, um, on, on that information for the moratorium and how it applies uh, where your uh, location or where you're renting at. I'd like to stop here to see if there's any questions related to what I just shared. Not so far, so pop them in that Q&A if you have questions. Perfect. Um, so just kind of a reminder of the documents that, um, that the loan forgiveness application um, is it's going to require for you to, uh, to have available. Um, it is, again, just your bank account statements or third-party payroll service providers. So if you, um, if you have a service, your payroll with EDD, I'm sorry, with ADP, Paychex, Gusto, um, Heartland, uh, any of your payroll providers, they normally have those official reports. So um, you'll need that information. The bank account and statements, preferably those that show copies of the canceled checks. I know that some banks provide those, so those will be helpful to have. Um, your tax forms, um, which are, um, uh, that include the cover period or the alternative payroll cover period that, you're, that you selected. The forms that you normally file with the IRS and EDD, again, if you have a third, per, uh, a third party service provider uh, for payroll, they normally uh, process those at the end of each quarter. So just ask them if you log on to their portal, you should be able to look at the quarterly reports and that's where you can access them. Um, if you do the payroll yourself through QuickBooks, I'll walk you through how to find those um, in a minute. Um, that right there within QuickBooks Online. Um, your state quarterly returns, which those for us in California are D9 and D9Cs. Um, and payment receipts of canceled checks or account statements documenting the amount of any employer contributions to employee health insurance and retirement plans that the borrower included in the forgiveness amount. So um, again, if you are you know, doing electronic payments, then maybe the confirmation page, I have shown you in the past how you can attach that to your transactions in QuickBooks um, and be able to access those very easily with, within that report. Um, as well as the documents that each borrower must uh, submit with PPP loan forgiveness for full-time employees, um, you are going to need to submit documentation showing 
the average number of the full-time employees on payroll per month employed by you or by um, between February 15, 2019 and June 30th, um, or January 1st, 2020 to February 29, 2020, or in the case of a seasonal employer, the average number of full-time employees on payroll per month employed by, the, by you from February 15, 2019 and June 30th, or between January 1st and February 29th, or any consecutive 12-week period between May 1st and September 15th. So again, you have options um, as to which period you want to compare that, pay, um, that cover period. Um, the selected time period must be the same time period selected for purposes of completing the PPP Schedule A line 11 on the, on the application. Um, and the documents may include payroll tax filings reported or that will be reported to the IRS. Again, those 940, um, 941s and D9s. Um, for documents, uh, for non-payroll documentation, documents that, are, that, that you're going to need to have available are business mortgage interest payments, so copy of the lender amortization schedule and receipts or, or canceled checks verifying eligible payments from the cover period, uh, or the lender account statements from February 2020 and the months of the cover period through one month after the end of the cover period. So. Um, Again, just make sure that you have the documents. If, if, if you are doing payments electronically, then just that confirmation page that you get when you make a payment electronically. Business rent or lease payments, a copy of your current lease agreement. Again, each bank has, may have their own rules of to how their, what type of information, if your lease agreement is you know 30 or, excuse me, 40 pages long, maybe just the first page where it shows that when you entered into that agreement. So check with your bank on that. Um, but, you know, also cancel checks verifying the eligible payments from the cover period. Um, and then obviously your utility payments. Um, same thing. It applies in that way. So any questions related to what I just shared? Because if not, then th this is the time to show. Um, I'd like to show you where you can find your 941s and your D9s within QuickBooks. And also QuickBooks came out with a nice uh, COVID-19 resources um, section within QuickBooks that it's very helpful in my opinion. Uh, so we did have one question. Um, should we be completing the forgiveness application now or wait until because it's being modified? Well, if you've already used the funds um, the way that you um, were, you know, intended to you, if you've already used all the funds, then there's, in, in my opinion, there's no reason for you to wait because you, you already have all the information. However, if you haven't used all the funds and you would like to, um, you know, to take advantage of these new changes because you haven't spent it all or, you know, things like that, then you got you want to wait until the covered period is completed. So um, if you still have funds and you still need to, you know, you now have more time to spend those funds in the right things. So you can do that. So you've used them, go ahead and fill out the application because you that 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 information is not going to change, right? You've already spent the money, you already have proof of how you've spent it. So that's what I would say on that. Great, those are all of our questions. All right, so now I wanna show you um, in our live demonstration for, um, for QuickBooks, how you can um, access that resource um, guide that QuickBooks has now released, um, including being able to apply for, um, for the PPP loan there. So if you go to payroll on the left, there is COVID-19 resources right within, again, QuickBooks. And the nice thing about that is that it, um, it gives you different things that you can do. For instance, if you are a new, um, uh, if you haven't applied for a PPP loan, you can apply now or check the status of your loan if you've applied 
Um, and then check the status if you've applied through QuickBooks, not just to, through any bank, uh, bank institution, but just through QuickBooks. Um, you can get the average monthly payroll cost. So that's the beauty of having everything in one place, um, again, such as QuickBooks, where you can already have that information ready for you. Um, this will give you um, last year's um, payroll. You can run a report to then show you show how much you've paid and it actually tells you what your average monthly cost is. Um, in this case, the 12,932, then you will take that number and multiply it times two, times two and a half and this is how you get um, this is how you get your your loan amount for the PPP. So, that is one source there. Um, the other source is um, once you have obtained the loan, um, I really like that um, QuickBooks now has this payroll cost report for PPP loan forgiveness. Um, and if, um, if you, let's say you got funded on 5-1, QuickBooks calculates what your uh, uh, period is with your 26 uh, 56 day pay period is. And again, notice that it is right now hasn't really changed um, yet to the 24 week. Um, obviously changes as you know are happening. Um, but this is where it then tells you how much of payroll is allowed, um, including employer taxes uh, and any contributions that the company has made. So it tells you, gives you that information on the payroll cost. Um, I know that in the past I've shown um, how to, you know, do that through a, maybe a journal entry, but now has, the books has come up with this um, with this feature, which I believe it's, it's great. You don't have to do that work or the thinking. Um, any questions? Um, so one more question, are the COVID-19 resources on QuickBooks desktop version? I don't know about that. Um, I, would, um, I would check within your payroll I want to say they probably are. Um, I'm not using desktop anymore, so I wouldn't know, but um, I would say go to your payroll center um, and usually usually there, any updates that they have, they, they, they should have them there. Um, and if not, um, you, can, uh, you can contact Intuit because they do have um, a QuickBooks community where they can, um, give you the workarounds as to where, how to find this same information in, um, in through the desktop. Um, notice how there's also there during, um, through the COVID-19 resources, notice there's also Families First uh, Coronavirus Response Act, which is for your employees or their families that are affected by COVID-19, you can provide them with national paid sick leave and apply uh, a credit to your payroll taxes. So if you go through that, it, it'll give you more information and more details of how, to, how you can apply for that credit, as well as the Corona, Coronavirus Aid Relief and Economic Security Act, which is the, the CARES Act, I'm sorry, the, um, how to defer your social security tax payments and apply uh, for a wage retention credit to help keep your employees on payroll. Uh, same thing, it walks you through the process of um, how you can apply for that and how to um, uh, set up that employee retention credit. Um, this is something that I would say it, it, it needs to be done. If, if, if you're doing your own books and um, you are uh, trying to figure this on your own, this is where having someone like SCORE or EDC um, on your side, helping you navigate through these is um, it's the best advice I can give you because um, you want to make sure that you are uh, understanding all the provisions correctly, particular how they, they apply or how they affect your business for future. So that's where, um, again, I was showing you the resources here within, within QuickBooks. Um, if you have been doing the expenses already, you can, you know, check that, I'm sorry, recording the expenses, um, you can check back a report I believe we did a PPP expenses report that can pull a summary of what has been applied or what, what applies to that cover period uh, from May 1st to 626. Notice how, you know, things will be 
um, recorded for you here. You'll be recording these things and then you can pull them up, pull them up easily. In the past, I've shown how you can assign a copy of the bill to each transaction, which makes your loan forgiveness process much easier because then you'll be able to access everything in one place. So that's a copy of the bill with a confirmation number. We have one more question. Can yes. you please discuss the employee withholdings, employer liability, section 125, and 401k employer match, and each of these eligibility for PPP forgiveness? Can, can I address those? Yeah. All right. So uh, can, I, can I get the specific, um, what, what exactly is it just, what, how it, how it, how it um, uh, applies? What yeah, so what but within, included exactly. Okay. So for um so the employer liabilities, when you pay your employee, um you pay them, let's say, ten dollars an hour. From that amount, that is the cash amount that you're you're eligible for forgiveness. Now, let's say that they retain three dollars from their pay. And let me see if I can pull it really quick here. So if I were to pull a payroll report, which gives us the, the payroll details, let me just pull it right from here. So let's say the last pay for this, um, you know, this was our payroll for last, for last, um, for last payroll. You pay uh, the gross amount, that is the amount that is uh, the eligible for forgiveness. Your employees, pay, um, the employee pays uh, federal income tax, which is determined by their W-4. They pay Social Security. They pay Medicare. They, they pay California PIT, which is uh, California uh, personal income tax. And they also pay California estate disability insurance. That portion is not what it's eligible for forgiveness. The portion that's eligible for forgiveness is the company paid taxes. Now, of the company paid taxes, it's only anything California. So in this case, California ETT, which is employment training tax that you pay on the first $7,000 uh, of each person's annual salary. So on the first 7,000 of, 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 of each employee's salary for the year. And California state unemployment insurance. This uh, is the amount that is eligible for forgiveness, and this is the amount eligible for forgiveness. Everything else, as you can see, for instance, in the example of this employee, their net pay was $1,000. Their gross amount was $1,261.90. So you are able, this is your cash compensation right here. This amount is what you account as your total cash compensation, even though the employee only got, only received 10,000, I mean, $1,000, and you paid for these payroll taxes, right? Um, the 126, the, the 29. Actually, the employee paid, but you are retaining that from their, their, from their paycheck. Now, you're making, obviously, the payment for the employee taxes and the employer taxes. But that, uh, again, the only amount that is eligible for forgiveness is the California ATT and the California SUI. Now, for most uh, employee, employers who, who paid $7,000 to their employees at the beginning of the year, or let's say through March 15th or March 31st, that's usually when you, you know, usually probably pay $7,000, you normally wouldn't have a California ATT expense after that, which is what we're seeing here, if you can see. Um, can you reshare your screen? Oh, am I not, am I not? sharing that? I've been showing and highlighting all of this. I'm sorry. All right. So this is what I was showing. I was showing the payroll report, which is the this employee, their net pay was $1,000. Their gross pay was $1,261.90. That is the cash compensation for that employee. The employee taxes are right here. And, and again, I like um, the QuickBooks reports, but there's also all of your other uh, payroll providers have this similar report where they show how much did the employee paid, how much did the company paid. 
And in this case, the company, um, it's on this last column uh, and the different tax that you pay. That you pay. Um, what about 401k employer match? All right, so on the 401k, this particular example, we don't have a 401k um, uh, um, assigned here. However, if let's say your employee, um, their, the employee uh, contribution or the retirement plan, let's say that you, your employee contributes $50 and you match a percentage of that. Let's say that you match 3%, right? So let's say you match $15 or yeah, $15. So that $15 that you match is what you are able to apply for forgiveness. Um, so that's what's included as a non-cash um, non benefit uh, contribution. So again, your employee may contribute $50 to their plan and you match up to 3%. So let's say that's $15. So that is what you normally, I'm sorry, $1.50? Um, that, that amount is what you, would be included as a contribution. Great, thank you. Um, so to confirm, the federal employer taxes, FUTA, SS, and MED are not eligible in the forgiveness amount. Correct, correct, Great. because it's only state, uh, state local taxes. Great, um, I've made approximately 3,600 non-approved forgiveness expenses under the PPP. Do I repay or balance out an individual bank account and deposit these funds back into our dedicated PPP account? Um, I don't think that you need to pay that. I mean, you, that you need to pay, put those funds back into the account unless you want to just repay uh, that balance all at once, right? Like if you, are, are you gonna make that uh, portion are you going to let that obviously if, it, if you're not going to be forgiven for that amount that now becomes a loan. So how are you going to pay it back. Do you want to just return that money. And if you do, then it would make sense that you return replenish those that amount into that PPP account so that then you can pay it all back in full. Otherwise, if it becomes a loan, then you don't have to replenish that those those funds into that account. You just uh, need to make sure that you now know that that's the balance on your loan. So Juliana, the way that I've been managing my PPP funds, I have a dedicated account for them and then all of my expenses get pulled out of my checking account and then I transfer from PPP into my checking to reimburse for those expenses. So what happens if I've made purchases or I, I used it for something that I shouldn't have used that's non-forgivable? Um, can I, using the method that you're talking about um, with QuickBooks tracking, can I reallocate those funds um, so that the QuickBooks report, am, am I making sense so that the QuickBooks yeah, report I, shows approved expenses? Like not doing anything funny, but. Right, well, I know that, I know that one of the, one of the um, recommendations was to put those funds into a separate account um, however, the purpose of putting them on that on, on that account was simply just so you know I knew how much money you had left to spend, or how much money you had you know you have spent that is related to PPP. But in reality, the actual accounting is in the way that we've been showing you. What are, of those funds, how much is really allowed and what it's not allowed, right? Because you can still, even if you have them on that dedicated account, you can still spend them any way you want. So. Right. That is why I'm saying, as long as you have the accounting of how you spend those funds, not how much money is left in that account or how much um, you already you know, use for something else, that's not what you're gonna need to show. What you're gonna need to show is how much do you really use it for the dedicated expenses or the approved expenses and how much you didn't because whatever you didn't use it or, or whatever you use for non-approved expenses, you're just simply gonna need to carry that as a loan on your books. So having right. it in that separate account really is not, uh, replenishing that account is not going to be, it's not a requirement. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. It's not a requirement that you have to have those funds that you didn't use for the approved expenses on a particular account. What you need to be able to show is that you, how you spend those funds and that you spend them on the right things. 
that's right. really what that what what I would say on that. I've um, um, I've always you know said if you have a good accounting system, you don't need to open a second account. And this is why we've been showing you how you can track that without the need of having to open that second account. Yeah, so that was another follow-up question is what's our recommendation? Is it to open a separate account? And we, in the beginning, we pushed that really hard. Yes, 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 open a separate account. And so what I'm hearing is if you have good accounting, which not every business does, right. by the way, call Juliana. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you have really good accounting, uh, and systems, then it's okay to keep it in the same account or not open a new account. Um, if you're maybe there's room for improvement in your accounting processes, um, it may be safer and clearer for you to open a new account. Right. And again, you, you need to understand that what you need to be able to show is how you spent the money, not how much money you spent. Right. Because if you have, if you've got the funds and you put them in this uh, dedicated account, but then are not able to pull a report from that accounting to be able to tell us, this is how much I use for payroll, this is how much I use for, um, uh, for rent, this is how much I use for utilities, and this is how much I use for interest. If you're not able to, to provide that information from the, the funding account, then again, it's really just in the accounting system. You can choose to keep that if that makes you feel you know, safer and if that makes you feel more organized and you can see again, the only reason that I would encourage that you leave those PPP funds is so that you can see how much money you have left from that, those funds. However, you can mm -hmm. still see that through, uh, through the QuickBooks uh, report that I showed you. Great. Um, are workers' comp premiums eligible for forgiveness? No, they're not. Okay. Those are all of our questions. Mm. Wonderful. Oh, what about AFLAC? Is that health insurance? So again, remember that it is, if, if AFLAC is a group, pro, if, if AFLAC usually is paid by the employee. However, if it's a benefit paid by the employer um, and it's set up as a group policy, then yes, you would be able to, um, to deduct that as a, as a company contribution. It in, and that would be called the non-cash company contribution. Yeah, and so um, for health insurance, it's only group policies that are eligible. Correct. Great. Yeah, they need right. to be set up that way. And again, this is where we say check back with your bank to see what they're allowing. You know what they will, what they are going to require as paperwork. If it's on your payroll report and that's all they need, perfect. Then you don't need to do anything else. But if it's not on your payroll report and now you need to show, you know, a different type of um, um, uh, documentation, then ask what, the, what they're going to require. Great. Um, am I understanding correctly that even if our employees are working, we can use PPP loan to pay for their payroll? It doesn't have to be only for employees that are no longer working due to a loss of a contract. That would be correct. Yeah, it is. Um, so let's say that you, you did, um, you know, you, you are use, you did get a PPP loan um, and you are continuing to conduct business as usual, keeping that same, um, those same employees on your payroll. What you need to just be able to provide is payroll documentation of the payroll that you paid for that period. It doesn't tell you just the employees that were laid off or just the employees that are working. It's just for your payroll in general period. Great. Yeah, and I just, I again, wanted to show really quick on the, um, on your, there is another report called payroll cost um, or total payroll cost, which is a little bit more simplified as far as what's, um, what's eligible uh, for, for instance, in this case, this total cost report doesn't show the employee taxes. It only shows the employer taxes. And again, that is because the employee taxes are already part of this gross payroll, which again, um, this is why this gross payroll is um, part, it, it's really the total cash compensation. So we don't need to worry about what is the employee's portion and what is my portion. What you need to worry about is what's your, the gross payroll and what is my California ETT and uh, SUI employer taxes. 
that is what's illegible. And again, if you if you have something in the QuickBooks online, you can go to that COVID-19 resources and get the payroll cost report for the PPP loan forgiveness. That report gives you that information as long as you just provide um, when you were funded. So in this case, if this company was funded May 1st, this tells them what's illegible. And you don't have to do the thinking of what's the allowable payroll expenses. Notice does how- that, Does that work um, only if you run payroll through QuickBooks? Yes, it does. Um, and this is where I was showing you last time. If you recall, I said, if you have a third part, uh, a third payroll provider, when you are recording payroll, this is when, when you are recording payroll is when you would be splitting these things with the PPP class and the, um, and the employer liabilities, uh, I'm sorry, the employee uh, liability separately. Great. Um, does regular QuickBooks have all the same features as QuickBooks Online? Um, regulars, uh, well, QuickBooks Pro, it does. Um, and, and again, if you are using uh, payroll through QuickBooks Desktop, you can, you, it, all, it also has the, the very similar features. But both QuickBooks are the same or have, they, they tackle the same. It's just a different feel. The way that they look is different. Just like when you go from, a, from an Android to, a, to an Apple phone, um, they, they work for the same purpose or they do the same things. They just do them a bit different because it's different um, portals, but it's pretty much, they, do the, they have the same functionality. Great. Mm -hmm. Some of our employees are under reduced hours. Does each employee need to be paid 75% over the covered period of what they used to make in order for their payroll to be forgivable? Yes, because remember, you need to be able to show that they, their, their payroll was not reduced by more, more than 25%. Great. We normally recall, record payroll as an all up in QuickBooks. I don't know what that means. And not individually or per employee. Can we still maintain this type of reporting or should we be reporting each employee payroll in QuickBooks? No, you can still, um, if, if, how are you processing your payroll? Are you processing it through a third party or where, where are you processing payroll? Because they'll give you a report. Um, I believe in the past I've shown that report of what it looks like in, um, in your payroll, um, from your payroll provider. Can she share who she does payroll with? It's a third party. It's a third party. Okay, so let me see if I can show you just um, this same report um, that, I'm, that we're seeing in QuickBooks um, through, you know, for, with a third party, let's say a report from ADP payroll. Um, yeah, she said the it's the same as what you have. Okay, so here, um, you're, you're gonna, and, and, and even ADP has that same report, but um, let me see if I can show you that report. So in this case, this is the payroll details report, and here is the payroll um, summary of the total gross, the taxes withheld, and the net pay, and then the employer liability. So very similar to the one I showed you from QuickBooks. They have that. So when you are recording, you don't have to record it by employee if you don't want to, because you again have each employee's uh, pay would be in this report. But when you are recording it in QuickBooks or in your accounting software, then you will be able to show the total, the $3,000 is your gross pay. The 509 is a liability then your, um, your 229 is an expense. When you make that payment, right, you, normally your, your payroll provider may, may uh, deduct the 2490 in one debit and the 509 plus the 229 on another debit. You'll still be able to select that this, of this 229, how much is California and how much uh, is um, you know, social security. And the nice thing is that uh, ADP or Paychex, because I've seen it in both, they also have this very similar feature of a loan forgiveness payroll cost details report. So as long as you tell them what your cover period is, 
they'll give you the same report that I just showed you, and it shows what is your total gross um, cash compensation um, uh, eligible for forgiveness. Great. Um, are payroll administration expenses through a third party eligible? Not payroll administration, uh, administration fees, no. Great. Those Not are all service, unfortunately. <laughs> No, we, um, we know that these are not easy things to, to know uh, right off the bat, but that's why we're here. So we thank you for being here. We thank you for allowing us to share information with you and walk you through the different processes. We know it's not easy, but that's why we're here. And I just uh, wanna give um, some you know, contact information. If you want more information, um, do you have our, um, hotline number um, that you can share. Yeah, Esther, can you pop that in the chat? Yes, um, but they can also visit santabarbara.score.org. We also have other workshops that go into more detail regarding the CARES Act or um, especially these BP changes. Um, we are trying to assist you with how to account, how to identify these in your, uh, in your reports and your accounting. Most important is to have an, account, an accounting system in place so that these are easy things for you to apply for forgiveness and navigate. Um, and if there are no more questions, we are done here unless there's somebody else that would like, a, a, has a specific question. Um, oh, we just got another one. Okay. Do you by chance have templates like Excel spreadsheets to list all of the expenses that will be forgivable? Um, we, don't, I would highly, I mean, I, if you, uh, to be honest, if you Google PPP Excel spreadsheet, I'm pretty sure you will find um, something. Um, I'm afraid though, why you wouldn't be able to do that through your accounting system. Is that because you don't have QuickBooks or something similar? Well, I, I would... know, I, I have mine, I'm, I'm, before they extended the period, um, I was concerned I wouldn't be able to use it all. So I started tracking in Excel so I could really use it more as a planning tool. Mm. Um, but, but yeah, now I'm switching to QuickBooks because that is more accurate and easy. Are you, are you learning from me? <laughs> yes, <laughs> always. Um, I, that's what I would say. I, I, I believe that one of the reasons that I encourage, you know, using and having QuickBooks um, in place is because it really simplifies your life in so many ways and it gives you the reports that you need. Um, obviously you need to know how to use QuickBooks and this is where we have these uh, workshops available. I know that my workshop is mainly dedicated to QuickBooks but as you can see we're also providing updates on the latest. So um, having uh, like I said a system in place is really just more to simplify your life. Um, it does take a bit of, um, of uh, concentration and dedication to have it in place, but um, prior to, uh, to the, the coronavirus or par uh, prior to this pandemic, we were doing this um, interactive workshops doing, helping you with understanding the different processes that you should have in your business. Um, the goal here is that every transaction or every move that you make in your business you should be able to then apply how you make that transaction, how you record that same move um, in your business in QuickBooks. So if you have a sale, how do you record that sale and how do you make that deposit so that it, it has a trail and it has a system. Same thing with expenses. And so that's why we now, when this, um, when this you know, PPP and IDLE uh, resources became available, having something like QuickBooks in place and again, it doesn't have to be QuickBooks. Um, so I don't see any other questions. Um, thank you for being here. Um, please reach out to SCORE and to EDC. Your tax dollars have already paid for the help uh, that they are able to provide. So don't hesitate, just call them. You're not alone in this. Um, and we hope to see you next week.